What's up guys, and today I'm going to be showing you how to add me T-Edit in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Yes, that's right, and for all the people still saying it's not possible, it has been possible for a while now, and you can get custom villager trays with this as well as a lot of other cool stuff. So stay tuned to see this entire video. Alright, so on my screen I have two versions of the same NBT editor. One is the free version, which is the smaller one you see here, and the paid version, which is the one I'm going to be using in this video. But if you want to use the freed version, I will put a link in the description, and it is actually the exact same process. You don't need to do anything differently. So first you're going to want to go ahead and create a brand new world. So it does. It can be a survival world, it can be an existing world, it doesn't need to be brand new. But I'm just going to name it NBT Testing just to um, distinguish it from the rest of the worlds. Then I'm going to make this a flat world, it doesn't need to be a flat world. Then just go ahead and create your world. I did turn on cheats, but it doesn't need to be on. Alright, so now that we're in this world, I'm going to show you a few different things you can do. So first I'm going to show you my interpretation of a hologram, then I'm going to show you how to make custom villager trades, and I'm going to show you a few other things along the way, and in the end I'm going to show you something ridiculous that you can do. So stay tuned for that. Alright, so now we got to get all the materials we're going to need. So basically an easy way to NBT edit is put all the items you want to edit in your inventory. But there is something that makes it even more easy. So first I'm going to get I got these two trial spawners just to sort of test because I don't I haven't tested these yet but with the regular monster spawner that is something I definitely know works so we're gonna keep that off to the side and I'm gonna show you how to set that one up okay, so what we have to do is get a spawn egg in the um, spawner so that is very simple we all know how to do that but then we need to get the spawn egg spawner in our inventory which is something I'm going to show you how to do. So first, I'm going to grab a, myself a spawn egg. So, alright, I grab myself a zombie spawn egg. And then we're going to place down the spawner. Put the spawn egg in it. And then you're going to do hold and control. This is something you can do on a uh, keyboard. You can do this on phone if you have a keyboard hooked up to it. So hold and control. And middle click on your mouse. So you're going to have to have a mouse clicked up to it or whatever button you set to block picks. So if you go into controller or controls and scroll all the way down, you can find pick block and you just set that to a button which you would like to pick the block. And you have to hold and control that cuz that sets up advanced pick block, which allows you to get items with data in your inventory. So now look, if we hover over this, it says plus data, and the regular monster spawner does not say plus data. When you place it down, it'll already have the mob preset inside it. So that is what we need, and that is what we're going to edit. Alright, so now I'm going to grab the axolotl in a bucket, which is what we need to put an entity in a bucket. And then I'm going to make the entity in the bucket be a villager with custom trades. So I'm going to show you how to do that, and... To set this up, we actually need to make it so it's not an item from the creative inventory. So see what I just did? I put the axolotl in a bucket, a uh, water bucket, not an um, empty bucket. And so now it says bucket of adult cayenne axolotl instead of just bucket of axolotl. And that makes it much easier to edit. Alright, so then you're going to want to put a villager in a secure p position in your world. So, I was actually able to only summon a tradable one with the slash summon command on the flat world. So, if you're having trouble with that, use the slash summon command. Then, you're going to want to mark this area. So, take some amethyst or another visible block and put it around the villager just as I do here. And it, this will be, allow you to mark the exact location of that villager. Then, I want you to save and quit your world and then open up the NBT editor of your choice. So, then go into the bedrock edition of the game, make sure you click the exact world that you made, open it up, and now in players, so if we go down here, these are, these are all t different things you can edit, but we're going to open the players tab, and in there, there's one player, which is going to be you, so click that, 
And you can see there are a lot of tags here. It looks overwhelming, but trust me, it is not. And I will go through the ones you need to know. So right here in this section, there are a ton of tags. So each one of these is tag or a compound, which is a group of tags. And every one of these things you have the opportunity with this application to modify, which means you can modify the player's walk speed, you can modify their ability to use the slash summon command for lightning, you can do so many different things with this. But we're going to be looking at the inventory section, which is right there. See how it says 36 tags inventory? That is where we're going to be editing, because that is where all our items are. So we open it up, we see all our items, now what? So you can see that the empty slots have 5 tags, and the filled slots have 7 or 6 tags, even something higher, like if it's a shulker box it can have 8 or higher. Basically these extra tags after the 5 are what we generally are going to edit. So if we go into here, we can see all the different tags that make up this. So you're going to want to go into the little section I'm in right now, and you can see there are a lot of different tags for different aspects of this spawner. But what we're going to be focusing on is the scale down here and the identifier. So if we go down to the bottom, we can see that I set the scale to a higher number than it originally was. So instead of 1, it is now 25. And the identifier I can set to something ridiculous, so I'll put it as a leash knot, which is the leash when you put it on a fence. Now, another thing that's worth noting is the player distance. So this makes it so that it spins when the player is a certain distance near the block. So if we set this to 1, it'll stop the spinning entirely. Now click the save button and load back up the world that you created. You should now see that when you place this spawner down, it gives itself a little hologram that stays still. It's got a tilt to it. There's not much you can do about that. But nonetheless, it looks utterly ridiculous. And I'm sure if you put this in a world, you can definitely confuse anyone who joins that world with it. Now, guys, I'm going to show you the Axolotl Villager, the moment you've all been waiting for. So if we zoom in right here, you'll see there are 69 tags in the axolotl. So if we look at this, these are all the different tags that make up the axolotl, and there are a lot in there. So what you need to do is actually find the tag of your villager. So click the chunk locator. This is on the paid version. And then find the exact chunk where your villager is located. So it's on that dirt block. And then you open up that chunk. And you should find entities and then your villager. And you see it has all the tags of that villager. So we're going to go in there. And we're going to get look for the definitions. And we're going to copy that. Then we're going to go into the axolotl. Find our definitions and delete those. Then we're going to go to tag and paste the villager definitions in the axolotl. Now you can see it has all the definitions for a villager, but right now it's still an axolotl form. So if we go back to our chunk, and we look in here, we also have offers. So this is our trade tables, and this is how our villager trades with us so if we go back here and we paste our offers in now our villager has offers now if we scroll down and see where it says identifier minecraft axolotl change that to villager underscore v2 press enter and that is a fully functioning villager but we want to give it special trades so to do that, we're going to scroll all the way up to Offers, and we're going to open the Offers tag. Now if we go to Recipes, these are all the villagers' current trades. And as you can see in here, it is trading, it is buying a Rotten Flesh and selling an Emerald. So if we change this count to pretty much anything we want, then it will change the count in the villager. So now if we change the 
what the item, the item's name, to, I don't know, gravel. Now it's gravel times 10. And now if we go to what it gives for the gravel, we can change the count to 10 or whatever we want. And then we can change the name to diamonds. And that'll make it so it trades 10 gravel for 10 diamonds. That's a ridiculous trade. But it gets even better because we can put items that don't normally exist in the game in the trade tables. So, stuff like glowing obsidian, nether reactor cores, border blocks, education edition items, basically you name it. So just to create a little example of that, if we go into another trade, and this is still tier 0, so we know it's going to be good for the first tier, and now we go into here, we can see it trades the emeralds for the redstone, actually it's the opposite way, it trades the it buys the emeralds, sells the redstone. So if we change the redstone to something like a um, border block, press enter. It's not going to show up, but it's going to work. So click save. And we're going to head to our world and see this crazy villager. Alright, so loading up the world, and all we have to do is take our bucket of axolotl and put it in a pit. And as you can see, there is no axolotl in this bucket. There is a villager. And it is selling border blocks, it is selling diamonds. So, yeah, that's how you make custom trades in Bedrock Edition with NBT. Something that a lot of people still think is impossible. Alright, so in the beginning of this video, I told you I was going to show you something ridiculous you can do. And I'm about to show you that right now, so stay tuned for that. Alright, so first, you're going to want to trim a full set of armor. So, once you got the full set of armor trimmed, just save and quit. Close the world, and open it back up so that you have the latest version of the world. Go to your player, go to the inventory... And look, we got all the armor, and it has some extra tags we can edit. Alright, so open up the armor, and you should see a trim tag. So, when you find this trim tag, just change the material to something random. Something completely random. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Then, change the design also to something random. So... And then you're going to want to copy that tag to each and every um, piece of armor. And after you're done that, make sure you save it all. Then load up your world and you will originally think that there is no armor in your inventory. You'll see what I mean. So there is no armor in my slots, right? But there is, if you take a closer look. There is armor definitely there, and, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm sort of lost, at a loss for words when I found this. I call it, a uh, Roblox armor, because, I don't know why, looks like a Roblox character, and I don't like Roblox, so, that's why I call it Roblox armor. 